In this assessment, we predict the product of the substitution reaction on screen. I've drawn three arrows pointing to the different aspects of the reaction because that's what we're going to use to make the decision about whether we're doing an SN1 or an SN2 substitution. We'll start by looking at the alkyl halide, which is secondary. A secondary alkyl halide can go through either the SN1 or SN2 mechanism. Uh, potassium azide, written as an ionic salt, K plus and N3 minus, shows us that the nucleophile here has a negative charge. Negatively charged nucleophiles are usually considered good nucleophiles and will more likely do SN2 substitution. So the nucleophile suggests SN2. Our solvent here is DMSO, which is a polar aprotic solvent. As a polar aprotic solvent, it's going to make nucleophiles stronger. Therefore, the polar aprotic solvent will also favor the SN2. With the secondary alkyl halide that can do either, a nucleophile that wants to do SN2 and a polar aprotic solvent that also wants SN2 to happen, that's going to be the result. And so I can redraw the molecule here to show the SN2 reaction occurring. We know that N3 minus will react in a concerted step to produce the chloride leaving group and a product with inverted stereochemistry. So the reaction will proceed with inversion. In fact, showing the inversion helps us to understand that it must have been an SN2 reaction that occurred.